Good morning, everyone, and I extend a very warm welcome to each and everyone here in person in church this morning, and also those taking part via the live streaming. We gather as one people of God for the Requiem Mass of Father Patrick Walsh. We gather with Mary and with those in person who are friends and neighbors and parishioners who have given great help to Father and to Mary in recent times especially. May I welcome those of Father's family in Ireland. They are unable to be here because of the restrictions on travel with lockdown. So I welcome Father Walsh's nieces, Mary Mannion and Marcella Smith, and Father's nephews, James Walsh, Tom Walsh, John Walsh, Thomas Walsh, James Harold, and Patrick Harold, and also the wife of the late Pat Walsh, Geraldine, and father's sister-in-law, Sally Walsh. Also, the grandnieces and the grandnephews, all the extended family. Father Walsh was a priest of Motherwell Diocese. Bishop Toll is unable to be here today, but he sends his sympathy and the promise of his prayers. The main celebrant is Bishop William Nolan, our own bishop here in Galloway Diocese. Bishop Nolan himself was also a priest of Motherwell Diocese before coming as bishop to Galloway. And from Motherwell Diocese today, I welcome Monsignor Tom Miller, who will be concelebrating Mass, and Canon Patrick McSorley, the retired priest of our own diocese here in Troon, and who has been a dear friend of Father Walsh's and of Mary's. I welcome the many of our own parish community taking part today via live stream and also members of the Diocese of Motherwell and of Galloway who will be taking part also. As you know, we can't join in the hymns and the carols ourselves, but the cantors will lead us in the very special words of the carols today. So with open hearts, we ask God to come into our lives this morning, that we may praise God and thank him for Father Walsh's long and good life and for his years as a faithful servant in the priesthood. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And welcome everyone. I know Kananachi gave a welcome just before Mass began to the few of us that are here, only 20 allowed here in this church of Our Lady in St. Bedens in Troon, and the many others, of course, taking part over the internet who are able to join us as we celebrate the funeral Mass of Father Patrick Walsh. Before Mass begins, we're going to place on uh, the coffin. Um, first of all, we're going to bless the coffin with holy water. And then we're going to place on the coffin the book of the Gospels, the cross of Jesus Christ, and the chalice and stove, which are symbols of Patrick's priestly ministry. In the waters of baptism, Father Patrick died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May you now share with him eternal glory. In life, Father Patrick cherished and proclaimed the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words, Come, you blessed of my Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. And in baptism, Father Patrick received the sign of the cross. May you now share Christ's victory over sin and death. And now we place on the coffin the chalice and the stole, which are symbols of Father Patrick's priestly ministry. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of love and friendship which knit us together throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray, asking God to gather Father Patrick to himself and to forgive us our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Patrick, your servant and priest, whom you honoured with sacred office, while he lived in this world, may exult forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. If your lips confess that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. By believing from the heart, you are made righteous. By confessing with your lips, you are saved. When scripture says, those who believe in him will have no cause for shame, it makes no distinction between Jew and Greek. All belong to the same Lord who is rich enough, however many ask his help. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved but they will not ask his help unless they believe in him, and they will not believe in him unless they have heard of him, and they will not hear of him unless they get a preacher, and they will never have a preacher unless one is sent. But, as Scripture says, the footsteps of those who bring good news are a welcome sound. Not everyone, of course, listens to the good news. As Isaiah says, Lord, how many believed what we proclaimed. So faith comes from what is preached, and what is preached comes from the word of Christ. Let me put this question. Is it possible that they did not hear? Indeed, they did. In the words of the psalm, their voice has gone out through all the earth and their message to the ends of the world. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were cast, making a cast in the lake with their net, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. <coughs> and they left their nets at once and followed him. Going on from there, he saw another pair of brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in their boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. At once, leaving the boat and their father, they followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. It was 1949 when Patrick Walsh was ordained priest. That means last year in 2019, he had been a priest for 70 years. That's quite an achievement. That's longer than some of us, me included, have been alive. Way back then, he heard the call. In our gospel, we heard Jesus calling his first disciples Peter and Andrew, James and John. And Patrick Walsh heard that same call all those years ago to come and follow Christ. And he's been faithful to that call throughout all that time. In our first reading, we heard how we depend upon other people in order to have faith. Because in order to believe in Jesus Christ, we have to hear his teaching. We have to be told about him. So someone has to tell us. We need a preacher. And how can we hear a preacher unless one is sent? Patrick Walsh took on that task of proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ to others so that others could hear that call and come to faith in him. The life of the priest is a life of proclaiming Christ to others so that others can hear that good news, the good news of God's love, the good news of God's great compassion and forgiveness, and so that others can come to faith in Christ. Now, Patrick Walsh was a priest for almost 30 years before I first got to know him. And I've always known him as, as Paddy. And I was just a newly ordained priest in the parish for the first time. Back in those days, of course, there were plenty of priests. Um, so you had a parish priest, you had a senior curate, and then you had a junior curate, and I was a junior curate. And my senior curate was Alec Devaney, who was a great pal of Paddy's. And often on a Sunday evening, we'd head over to Court Bridge in order to visit him. He was always a very welcoming uh, character and also a very, a very pleasant character to visit and very encouraging to a newly ordained priest. I was also struck by the fact that Paddy was among others who when they went to seminary back in Ireland, because there were so many priests in those days, they knew that not only were they answering the call to serve Christ as a priest, they also knew that they were not just leaving their home and their families, 
but they're also going to have to leave their native land as well. Because there were so many priests in Ireland, most of those who went to seminaries knew they were going to go abroad. And the seminaries would be regularly visited by bishops from Scotland, England, Wales, Australia, America, getting the seminarians to sign up and come to them. So Paddy left his native land to come way back in 1949 to the Diocese of Motherwell, which had only just been created just two years before. He wasn't, of course, the only Irishman in uh, Motherwell Diocese among the clergy. I'd imagine that probably half, if not more than half, of the clergy in those days were from Ireland. We depended so much upon priests from Ireland um, to minister in our parishes and spread the faith. And among those priests, there were many who were quite outstanding in the example that they set, in the holiness of their lives, and in their commitment to Christ. One or two others, mind you, that could have <laughs> were a bit more formidable, but Paddy was not one of them. He was certainly very encouraging and very faithful in his ministry. I always found it a little bit sad um, as a priest of Mother Diocese that so many of the Irish priests, when they retired, they went back to Ireland again. Quite understandable, of course, to go back to their family and friends that they'd left maybe 50 years before. Um, but it did mean as a priest in the diocese that suddenly these priests who were outstanding characters or key figures in the diocese left and you had little or no contact with them after that. Paddy, however, decided to retire to Troon. And that was a great place to retire to because of all the golf courses round about, because so many of the clergy in those days played golf, and of course they were always passing through Troon. And so it meant that, of course, they were always meeting up with Paddy in Troon, and even though I wasn't a golfer, I was still hear about him back in the diocese from the, the, the clergy golfers who would tell you, oh, you'd met Paddy and tell you how well he was doing in his retirement. And in fact, he was doing very well in his retirement. He retired early as a priest. He was only, I think, 68 at the time. Um, and that was way back in 1992. So he said a good 28 years of retirement. And I think the fact that um, he hadn't had good health, but I think the fact that he, in retirement, he gave up all the stress of, uh, uh, of being a parish priest, all the hassle that goes with it. Uh, and that's a great relief. And Paddy could still continue his priestly ministry because um, that was something he still continued and liked to do. So he would still go and visit the school here, um, uh, St. Patrick's Primary School here every week. He would still help out in parishes round about. You can continue to be a priest and do the things that you loved uh, without the, the stress and strain of actually being the parish priest. Now, Often in seminary, when you're trained to become a priest, you're told of the sacrifice you have to make to become a priest, of what you're giving up. You know, giving up a family, you're not going to get married, you're going to give up, giving up having children, and all these different things. But in actual fact, becoming a priest is always also a great blessing. And you receive so many blessings. And though you may not have a family of your own, you, your parishioners are your, are your family. And in every parish, you find people who are great support to you, who show you so much greatness, great love and kindness. And as a priest, you can take for granted the, the kindness um, and the generosity that other people show you. But Paddy, I think, was very blessed in the fact that he had Mary as his housekeeper for all those years. She was his housekeeper for... 53 years, which is quite an achievement given that she only came for six months. But uh, <laughs> having been enticed by Paddy to come from Ireland and leave Ireland and go to steps where she'd never been and never heard of before, um, 
She's been faithful with him all that time and has cared for him and looked after him. And that's, I'm no doubt, uh, one of the reasons why he had such a long and healthy retirement as well, because he's, he has such care shown to him. During our Mass today, because it's Christmas time, we're singing carols. And it's amazing when you look at the words of the carols, how you see how appropriate they are even for funerals. Our very first carol there, the Heart of the Herald Angel Sings, has the words about bringing man to rebirth. Um, at communion time, um, our carol away in the manger is going to talk about God making us fit for heaven. And at the end of Mass, our carol at the end of Mass, the once in world Davis City has um, the words about leading his children to where he has gone. When Paddy accepted the call of Jesus to follow him way back in 1949. It was a call to follow him not just in service of others and the priesthood. It was a call to follow Christ through death to where Christ has gone. New life with God. And that's the same for all of us. We're all fought called to follow Christ, not just by imitating him in the life that we live now, but also to follow him through death to eternal life. Now Paddy had 96 years of life here among us, a long time. But that time is as nothing compared to the eternity, the eternal life he now enters now in the presence of God. We gather this morning to celebrate this funeral mass, not to commemorate the death of Patrick Walsh, but to celebrate his birth, his birth into eternal life with God. Placing our faith and trust in God's love for us, we turn to our Father now in prayer. For Father Patrick, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our brother, Father Patrick, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our brother Patrick, who served the church as a priest, that he be given a place in the liturgy of heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For the family and friends of our brother Patrick, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. In your goodness, loving Father, answer the prayers of your family gathered here and show us your love. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We ask your mercy, Lord, to this sacrifice of our service offered for the soul of Patrick, your servant and priest, may now bring pardon to him who devotedly offered sacrifice to you in the church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all your created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, and they become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he is betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted, we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ninian, St. Patrick, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family 
whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Patrick, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy they should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Since we're receiving queen in silence, let's acknowledge now the presence of our Lord, the body of Christ. Amen.
for those taking part online who obviously can't receive communion, we say now the prayer of spiritual communion which comes from St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually to my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Father Patrick, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. Although we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joys of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. We make a silent prayer of farewell. Blessed Water and incense are now used. Water, the sign of Christian baptism. And incense, a sign of respect for Father Patrick's body, which in life has been the temple of the Holy Spirit of God.
Christ who called you, take you to himself, the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother, Father Patrick, in a sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with Father Patrick forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Can I just say a few words of thanks at the end of our Mass for all those who have uh, contributed to the Mass today. We can't have a Mass nowadays without welcomers and cleaners who, who sanitize the church. I do appreciate the work that they do, uh, making that possible. And thanks also, of course, to our organist Susan, our violinist Hans, and to Joseph, our cantor today, for enhancing our service with, uh, with music as well. In peace, let us take Father Patrick Walsh to his place of rest at Troon Cemetery. And before our procession, we say an English version of the traditional Latin hymn, In Paradisum. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem, May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham and where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. <laughs> 